Given the nature of mountain biking, you're gonna damage your wheels here and there, and sometimes that'll mean breaking a spoke or two. Now, it's easy to replace a spoke at home. You don't have to be afraid of doing it because it's not the same as building a whole wheel. As long as your wheel isn't too far gone, this is how you get a spoke back in a wheel and get it true. So tools for this job, you're gonna need some replacement spokes in the correct length, along with some replacement spoke nipples, Allen keys to remove your wheel from your bike, a chain whip, a cassette removal tool with an adjustable spanner, rim tape, or alternatively, gorilla tape or electrical tape, relevant spoke keys to suit your spoke nipples, optionally, a spoke tension meter, ideally, a wheel jig, Alternatively, you can bodge a, a wheel jig using your frame and having some cable ties on there, obviously. So firstly, you're gonna to need to prepare your wheel before you start fixing it. So obviously I've taken a tire off this particular one because it was full of sealant and needed to clean it up a bit. And in doing so, I've noticed that the actual rim tape is damaged where when the spokes broke, they actually pierced straight through the rim tape. So that won't seal again. And if I chose to run a, an inner tube in there in the future, there's a good likelihood that I can be able to snag the tube and puncture it. So that's gonna to need to be replaced. So bearing in mind, there are various different types of rim tape available. This was set up sort of for tubeless, so you need a tubeless ready rim tape. In our workshop here, we've got some random DT Swiss rim tape here. We've also got Gorilla Tape, which is a really popular option, and some rim manufacturers actually ship theirs with this. And you can get away with using electrical tape, despite what people say. As long as you put it on and it covers sufficiently, it will seal tubeless. So next up, because this is a rear wheel I'm replacing the spokes on, I'm gonna to need to remove the cassette from the bike, so you need a chain whip and a cassette tool for that. If yours is none drive side, you're gonna to need to remove your disc rotor, so you'll need a Torx T25 for that. Of course, if it's the front wheel, you'll only need to remove the disc rotor if it's on the disc side, and you won't if it's not. And then, of course, you need to work out the exact spoke length and type that you need to replace yours. If it's a regular spoked wheel, say a 32 spoked wheel, you can measure these spokes up and most good bike shops will carry stock. But more unusual wheels, like these particular ones, these are Mavics that came on my Nuke Proof, and they've got bladed spokes. So these are different length spokes and they quote them all on the Mavic site so you can get the specs for them and order them online. Make sure you get the right spokes for your wheel. So obviously you need to make sure you've got the right style of spoke first. You get straight pull spokes and you get regular spokes which has got a slight hook on the end. These particular wheels have got straight pull spokes. So I already know that and I've already ordered my spokes. Just make sure when you're replacing your spoke, you mimic what the other spokes do in the same area. So firstly, I'm just gonna remove this other spoke that's also got a bit of damage to it. So of course, when you're removing spokes, make sure you have the right spoke key. It's essential that it fits correctly. There's a number of different ones on the market. If you're unsure about this, your bike shop will be able to demonstrate to you the difference between them all before you buy one. So first things first, you just need to locate the head of the spoke onto the flange of the hub there. You find it just locks into place. If you've got a conventional spoke, you just push them through and pull them to the side. Now on this particular wheel, I just have to cross the two spokes and it lines up with the hole here in the rim. So I'm just gonna tuck the edge of the spoke through there. Because I don't trust myself to not drop the spoke nipple into the rim cavity here, I'm actually using just a fine pick just in the back side of the, of the nipple here because I can't thread into it because of the design. I'm just gonna push that through into the rim. You can see it there. And I can locate the nipple onto the spoke and just tighten it up just enough that I know it's not gonna fall off. Now what you wanna do when you're replacing your spokes is just do them up finger tight. You'll find that's often just to the end of the threads. Just enough to hold the spoke in place to hold a little bit of tension. So my three spokes are now replaced into the hub and I've got the nipples screwed on. I'm just gonna use the spoke key here and just sort of loosely nip these up until the spoke nipples at the end of the threads here on each one. And then we're gonna to go to the wheel jig and get this thing straight. So you don't need to know everything about building wheels to replace a couple of spokes and true it up. But what you do need to know are the really key things. So initially you don't wanna do over a quarter of a turn with your spoke key. Then also you've gotta bear in mind, you don't wanna to put too many turns on any one spoke. So you might be just drawn into the fact that the wheel has been pulled over to one side and be trying to cure that. But as you're tightening your spoke, you're actually pulling it in and you can actually make the wheel slightly egg-shaped. You'll increase the hop in it. So every time you have to tighten the spoke, consider that you might not need to tighten it, you might need to just back off the tension on the two spokes either side of it. So firstly, you need to get your wheel into the wheel jig. You'll need to use your rear wheel axle for this. 
just set it into the top and then just tighten the jig and then make sure that your wheel is fully in as if this was a fork or part of the frame itself. Then using the lower set of cages here, you make your adjustments so you can see your side to side. As you can see, you can screw these in and out. And obviously I want to do up and down as well. So I'm going to use a slight L-shaped indent here. I'm going to put it underneath the rim and I'm going to screw it all the way in. Now I'm just going to give it a spin and you'll find it's probably going to contact on here. And there we go, we've got a reference point straight away. So I'm just going to back it off a tiny bit so I don't take too much paint off the edge of the wheel. And then I'm going to start working my way around the spoke nipples. Note how I'm sat in line with the top of the rim here. So I can see the side to side and the up and down just by looking straight down it. And you can hear the spokes coming under tension there as they twist slightly when you tighten them. So this is something that you have to work on through the wheel. Once you've got your wheel roughly straight, you want to take it out of the jig and I'll show you how you relieve that tension on the spokes and they'll pop back into place again. So I've worked my way around the whole wheel, just sort of nipping up those three key spokes and then just with a bit of adjustment, loosening some and tightening others, I've got the wheel as straight as I can. I have noticed that this has got a slight bend in the rim, so it's never going to be perfect, but it's good to go basically. But one important thing you need to do before you finish truing your wheel is relieve the tension on those spokes. So as you tighten the nipples, the spokes also slightly move and that creates a popping and pinging. You want to relieve that tension now and then double check because some of those nipples would have just loosened themselves slightly. Do it a couple of times, then ride your wheel and you're good to go. But this is how you remove the tension. So put the wheel on a hard surface. If you need to, just protect the axles and just lean on the sides of the rim. Again, lean on it, not like giving it a massive push so you can bend the wheel. It's just enough so you can help remove that tension. So essentially, this is what I'm looking for. You can see a tiny bit of air, a bit of daylight on both sides here. And the rim, although it's not 100% straight, that's pretty close considering. It's had three spokes out of it, enough for the rest of the spokes to pull the rim out of shape and distort it. My rim is obviously very slightly damaged, but that's a pretty good job. So you don't actually need a wheel jig just to do this job at home. It is possible to do it with your bike. So before you get as far as replacing the tire, if you just put your wheel back into the frame, make sure everything lines up well, put the axle back through. I'm just gonna do this one finger tight for now to show you. Now using a trusty cable tie, you can set one across the top of the rim so you can monitor the hop up and down. And another one, you can adjust this as need dragging on the side wall of the rim to do the side to side. And you've got essentially a homemade wheel jig. So this is perfect just for doing a job as simple as this. We're just replacing a couple of spokes. The wheel is mostly in good condition, so there's nothing to worry about. If your wheel is a bit more knackered than that, then you will need to put it in a wheel jig and do it properly. So if you've got access to one through a friend, maybe you should borrow one. So the wheel's trued, everything's done, ready to go back on the bike. Just need to put some rim tape on, on this particular one, and then put the tire back on. Of course, if you're putting the tubeless rim tape back on, it's sometimes very important and crucial by manufacturing dimensions to put the correct one on. Mavic, for example, recommend one to be 0.15 millimeters thick, so they say use their own one, but you can get away with using other materials like I explained earlier. So there you go, there's the basics of replacing a spoke on your wheel. Remember, this is just a case of something to do if you've just snapped a spoke and you haven't mangled your wheel. If your wheel is massively buckled and out of true, I definitely recommend taking it to your local bike shop and getting them to have a look at it first. If you want to find out some more great videos, check down here for some frame protection decals. It's a great one to do, especially if you've got a new bike or something with a flashy paint job you don't want to sort of mess up when you're riding it. And of course, another great one is 10 tools to make your life easier when working on your bike. Really helpful, a bunch of tools in there, hopefully that make your life easier. Of course, as always, click on the globe to subscribe. There's new content coming at you every single day. And of course, if the video has been helpful, give us a thumbs up.